YouTube. Welcome to my shop. I'm Mike Head and this is Round 2 Woodworks and uh, I certainly appreciate you stopping by. Um, what I wanted to talk to you today about was uh, a do-it-yourself splitter. Now before we get going, I want to make sure everybody understands that, boy, I'm not trying to tell you how to be safe in your shop and what to do in your shop or anything like that. I'm just showing you what I do in my shop. And uh, one thing I, you know, I strive for is safety. You know, the shop can be really dangerous. And uh, I mean, uh, my, my father even cut his, his finger one time on a table saw, and I thought he was way too smart to cut his finger. And, and if he can, anybody can. But uh, there's not only the dangers of uh, cutting your finger, there's the dangers of kickback, which can also be quite dangerous. So um, what uh, I've decided to do, I mean, if you've seen uh, some of my uh, other videos, I was saving for a table saw. I wanted, I wanted a, a, something in the 2000 right around the $2,000 range. And I wanted some specific things for it. I wanted a, a, a riving knife, and uh, you know I wanted uh, accuracy, and I wanted uh, dust control. So uh, then along came this deal with this table saw. Now this table saw is a Delta X5 Unisaw. It's a very nice saw. It was bought from Rockler brand new uh, in 2009. Now, in 2009, they had riving knives, but the, the gentleman that bought this, uh, he didn't go for the extra for the riving knife. So, uh, and then it went to his house, and he used it, you know, probably a couple of months in 2009. And then eventually it went under a tarp out on the patio, and it was just an aluminum awning. So, uh, when I got it, the flash rust was fantastic. I mean, it was bug hotel. I mean, uh, there was, uh, I think every spider west of the Mississippi had been living in there at one time or the other. So it took a long time to clean it up. And, uh, you know, but uh, when I got it cleaned up, it, it was really nice. It's a very, very nice table. The problem with it is it's, uh, it doesn't have the the new type uh, uh, guards on it or the riving knife or anything like that. So before this table saw, I had an old Sears contractor saw, and the uh, fence of it would there'd be like a half inch that would hit on the edge, you know, when you tightened it down, and that seriously could be out a quarter of an inch. So every time you, you made a, a cut, you had to, to measure the fence from, not, not the blade, you had to measure it from the miter out here and the miter out here to make sure that that fence was correct. Now sometimes when it was real close to the miter, um, you know, I'd eyeball and say, that's pretty good. And I'm telling you, I've had some kickbacks on that old saw. And uh, kickbacks can really sober you up. Um, I guess it's kind of like a NASCAR driver. You know, a kid will be out there racing hot and heavy. Oh, I can make that hole. Hits the wall at 200 miles an hour. And, uh, the, you know, after a couple of 200-mile wall hits, they're not so quite uh, anxious to see if they can fit. So, uh, you know, you... you uh, when you're when I you try to speed up the time and you eyeball it now yeah, that's fine uh, and then you take a board a two by four and you're sliding it through and it'll pinch that and it will shoot that sucker out of your hand and, and I mean I, I I had a two by four one I, I like this I cup it as I'm running it through and it would hit that sweet spot where the the tension is just right or the, the uh, angle is off from the blade to the uh, uh, fence. And I mean, it'll pinch that and it'll, in one split second, it kind of builds up this, this you know, force. And then all of a sudden, bam, 
and it will shoot it right out of your hand. And that, that table saw was a one and a quarter horsepower. This is more than twice that. So uh, I don't like kickback. I mean, to give you an example, when I was doing that, uh, uh, that kickback, my, uh, my table saw, I always use it out by the garage door, which right here I'm about halfway in because I also use it as a workbench or a workstation. So anyway, it was way out by the door. And it shot that board through and it came back like an arrow all the way across the ground and hit this, this box. And I mean, it, that the plexiglass in here, I, I'm still picking up shrouds from uh, around it. I mean, it blew up. And uh, uh, luckily my Mitya toy wasn't in, but you can see where that came through, that two by four came through, hit hit this, and I just barely missed it. it. It didn't hurt the tool at all. And I'm glad it didn't, but my Mitchell toy was in there, and it, it, if it wasn't in there, thank heavens it wasn't in there, it would have, it, it would have destroyed it. This a $29 tool, I've been kind of mad. This a $129 tool, and I'd have really been mad. So, not only can kickback hurt you, it can hurt things in your shop, too. So, uh, you know, this since this table didn't come with a riving knife, it, it came with one of the old-fashioned guards. Now, this guard is um, it's huge I mean to put this guard on or take it off you have to undo both here there's a big old piece of metal about the size of a, a you know small block Chevy that this goes into and another bolt goes on so to put it it's not like reaching down press a thing and lifting it off boy that would be nice. But, as I say, life isn't perfect, so you got to deal with what you have. Now, this was a splitter. You know, this was the splitter. And, uh, you know, if I couldn't have a riving knife, I definitely wanted a splitter. So, uh, the problem with this is this is old. It's, you can't, you know, I think most woodworkers working on the table saw when they push a piece over they want to see the blade where it hits the mark that you want to cut well with this you can't see squat under there you know it's just it's foggy and beat up and scuffed up and so the guard I don't use you know I I, I wish Actually, I don't wish I had a guard that I could use. I, I, I've had a table saw for a long time, and I mean, if you look at old Norm Abrams shows or something, New Yankee Workshop, I mean, there's no splitter, there's no riving knife, there's no dust control, there's no hearing protection, and, and basically, that's how woodworking was through my lifetime, you know, and 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 later it got to where. Uh, you know, dust control and that, all that stuff is important. And it is important, very important. And I, I try to use as much as I can. But I'm going to, you know, I live in reality too. If I need to make one cut, zing, I, I, don't, uh, I don't go and put my dust mask on and my hearing protection. And, and most of the time, I mean, the, the eye protection, these are prescription, so... <laughs> And they're uh, uh, safety glasses, prescription safety glasses. So I'm mandated to wear my safety glasses all the time or I can't see. So that's a good thing. That's a real good thing, actually, in one aspect of it. Uh, but uh, uh, safety equipment, I mean, if I'm going to be doing a lot of ripping and stuff, sure, the dust mask and uh, the hearing protection. Well, actually, the hearing protection, i got to say, 
I don't use a whole lot because I've got my MP3 player with my earbuds and I got Stevie Ray Vaughan cranked up and pff, I can't even hear the song. So that sounds kind of weird. But what could be weird about uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and uh, Voodoo Chili? So anyway, let me show you a close-up view of uh, my DIY splitter. Okay. As I say, t uh, table saw safety is really important to me after having a few kickbacks, you know, with the old uh, table saw. So, as I say, it sobered me up. So, I wanted to have a table saw with a minimum. I couldn't have a riding knife. I want a minimum of a uh, splitter. As you can see, this splitter is huge, so I can't use it with my uh, side sled or or anything so I was always having to take it off and um, you take it off by a bolt here and there's a big piece of metal back here about the size of a small block Chevy and uh, the back part of it connects on to that and uh, uh, it was just too big for my sled or anything so I was constantly taking it off it takes a lot to it take it off it takes a few minutes not that a few minutes is all that important, but when, you know, when you got to do it two or three times, it gets pretty monotonous. So I was thinking of a better way. And uh, what I came up with, I went down and I looked at some of the, um, uh, the aftermarkets. And it, uh, it seems like the aftermarkets uh, splitters, they were put into an insert and they were just... So they, they were just there and uh, if uh, you needed to uh, do a data or something you'd have to take the insert out with the thing and put another insert in so they were kind of always there uh, I didn't really kind of like that idea plus they were 29 and 39 dollars for aftermarket so um, you know since they're solid if you turn your blade they, they wouldn't move but if uh, you can see this one, uh, it, it will move. Now the way I made this, this one, is I went down to the Salvation Army and I got a uh, $1.95 uh, hamburger flipper. You know, and I... Uh, I cut out a small, uh, a small splitter for inch stock and under, and the, and a bigger splitter for uh, you know eight quarter or under. So uh, I just got my hacksaw and just cut it out, filed it off, rounded it off, drilled a hole in it so it, it will drill in there. And as you change, as you change the angle of the blade, the splitter will work with it. So uh, that's how I came to get my $1.99 splitter. And it really works good. And, and I'm telling you, uh, even this saw, I had, uh, you know, the fence was up here. And I had the splitter there, but I had a, you know, a square foot square piece that I was, I was cutting half inch off or so. I was thinking, boy, I should, I should put that splitter back on. And about that time, as I was pushing it through, I had something over else over here which I shouldn't have. And I, I just kind of reached for it. When I did, I must have turned the stock a little bit, and it kicked it back. And why it kicked it back is, is. Um, of course, my saw is unplugged. If you're going like this, the blade in front is pushing down on this. The blade in back is coming up on this. You know? So as you're pushing it through, if if it if the wood has stress and wet wood especially, but if wood has stress or if you get it angled wrong, it will pinch into that back blade and that back blade will catch 
and it will pinch against the fence and it will like build up a, a big tension and kapow and it will shoot it out like that and I'm telling you it shoots it out drastically so uh, the splitter on the other hand as you go by it hits the wood and it won't let that piece come over onto the blade and that's where the splitter works so uh, I, I ever since I have used the splitter I've had no problems with kickback at all and of course this table saw is aligned by the thousands not by the sixteenth of an inch so that's basically why I decided to put the, the splitter on because I'll tell you when it kicked back when I was uh, 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 doing it uh, pushing it through and it kicked back on me it tightened up pow and hit me right in the gut right there and it was like a young Muhammad Ali had given me his best shot and I'm telling you I've been over but what was even worse is it kept on flying and uh, let me show you what happened there okay so when I was when I was pushing on this thing and that that hit me, that uh, foot square uh, stock hit me, and I mean it hurt. And then it went sailing across. Now you gotta understand my table saw is out by the garage door. That's where I saw, so it's way out there. And that came flying, came flying across the hood of the hot rod. The band saw wasn't here, and it whacked into my metal cabinet, leaving a, a big dent. Now I'm telling you, if it would have it would have hit my hot rod and put a dent in that I wouldn't have been mad I would have been highly pissed off and uh, so that goes to show that kickback and safety it, it not only protects you it protects things in your shop so uh, I highly recommend uh, on a table saw using at least a splitter you know, and uh, you know, I you can take this as advice or, or not, but you know, Charles Niels has it right. You know, he says if something, if you're uncomfortable with something, don't do it. And uh, when when I was sitting there pushing that blade through, and I said to myself, you know, I should put that splitter on. I should have stopped right then and, and put that splitter on. You know, that was my, that was my smart self saying, hey, idiot, you know, something could bad happen, and it almost did. I mean, it was bad enough that it, I had a red mark for three days, but boy, if it would have hurt my uh, hot rod, I, whew, I'd have been on the floor crying like a baby. So, um, you know, safety is not only good for you, it's good for the things around your shop. So, um, you might... Uh, if you don't have a splitter, you might use an old, uh, good old American stainless steel flat, uh, hamburger flipper. And uh, it seems to have worked real good for me and uh, I, I, I won't do a rip without, without one. So anyway, that's my two cents YouTube. Uh, as I say, I'm not trying to uh, teach you about anything, I'm just showing you the way I do it in my shop and if uh, you, you get an idea I, I hope you can run with it so thank you very much y'all take care of yourself we'll see you next time